We've done a lot of evaluations this week. Inside of almost every evaluation, I would say seven out of eight have failed in these two areas. One's called repeat rate and the other one is ecom prodigy. And those of you who've been following me for a long time probably know what those two things are, but there is two hidden things that will completely crush your Google ads account if you're not watching these. And if you're not actively identifying if they're firing properly or if they're firing incorrectly or if they're missing or if they're firing back the wrong feed ID, these are things that will completely just destroy your business. This is just pull up an account. I don't know what the date range is. Less was it like 30 days? I don't know. Anyway, let's just say last 30 days. So scaling the account up, added seven grand to bring it up to 13, added then seven grand of conversion value. So our CPA stays the same. Easy peasy, nice, easy, simple scale. Mm -hmm. But two things that we gotta look at to see is Google using the optimal amount of partial data in order for it to effectively self iterate and learn if you're going to use an automated bidding strategy. And first thing that you want to look into is go into your conversions into the summary mm -hmm. and then click up here into the all conversion actions and then go into column, modify columns under performance. You're going to see something called repeat rate. And repeat rate is the average number of conversions you receive based on interactions that led to at least one conversion. So what this means is that if I see a 1.10 here, it means that my $19,000 in conversion value is inflated by 10%. Got it. So $2,000 of this has been repeated, which means someone has come in and placed an order. And then within those 30 days, either they've replaced an order or if this repeat rate is more like a 1.5 1.8 2.2 it could be duplicate counting based on visitations to that thank you page which is oh, then duplicating okay. all yours all this means is that ralph had a click that led to 1.10 conversion and repeat rate is basically is the pixel firing on the thank you page after they supposedly purchased yeah. They might have reloaded that thank you page, and you're saying that would obviously count in this particular case. Now, Shopify has it built in that you could reload it, and it's called an mm -hmm. and if. And if not new user, then don't count it again. So it actually cookies the user and will stop that repeat rate. But right. if you have a custom build, if you have WooCommerce, you have WordPress, if you have something else, like even uh, Wix. Like I've seen repeat rates where people are like, I am crushing it. I'm like, do you know your repeat rate is 2.94? I'm like, your, your value is actually inflated by 300%. Like, oh, so like there's 30 grand there it means that only 10 grand actually came in. So your ROAS is off. And because your ROAS is off, your automated bidding strategy is off. And because you're using a T ROAS, your T ROAS targets are off. And now well, why Google has it, learning that. Why wouldn't it be the same buyer just buying in that case, like almost three times? Well, a lot of times if you have a 30 day, um, uh, a 30 day time period, and then you go into, um, the you can actually hop into here and then go to web pages you can actually see if some things have been counted more than once sometimes you'll see like let's say um i'll just do this i'll do the all conversion value here it's like all conversion this time will sometimes say like six and then that'll be multiplied by six but then you actually can go and find the page that was multiplied six times and say well i don't think this one actually is going to pull up because this is probably um Yes, yeah, it's a pixel solution but this is the this is the url that's been fired as that tag so it's like okay unique uh, ID, unique order ID, three. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. that order was counted three times. Okay, what would cause that? Though That is things where it's like the pixel's been refired or go dive really deep. You send a text message. It says, hey, your order is on its way. And you link back to the thank you page because the map is there with the shipping information. You've refired your own pixel potentially. Okay. An email campaign. Hey, your order is going to arrive. It's shipped out. It's arriving soon. Your order is coming tomorrow. People that use that to go back to the thank you page if you're not excluding them, or if you don't have your account set to one, it's going to repeat it. If okay. Shopify, if you don't have that, if you don't have that, and if is what it's called, and if it's all one word is a and d i f. Why but would somebody not, do that though? Like, wouldn't they be like, like, like check on your order status, like see where it is, like yeah. you know, a separate page as opposed to so you see this a fair amount. Like this is a fairly common issue. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be talking about it here. No, oh, it's, it's very common. Um, yeah. I can't go and pull up a lead that contacted us where we found this, obviously, publicly, but there is yeah. six out of eight of them, basically two-thirds, are all repeated. Um, 
And so that was what was really what was really interesting is because the repeat rate was like really high, but everything downstream then fails. Because now the goal is being met without having to work. It's working half as hard to get twice as much. So now it's 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 you know, it wakes up that day and says, oh, I, I hit the T ROAS target for today because I repeated all the buyers from yesterday. I'm done. Ah, so the algorithm picks it up, obviously. And then yes. gotcha. Because now it says, Hey, we had I made 15 sales today. Well, how many clicks did you get? Zero. Ta da. Like we met goal. And when Google price fixes based on your goal, that's awesome because now you're screwed even worse. Because now Google's like, I can charge you whatever I want. Sure. Sure. But in app looks great. And app looks great, yeah. And now the other thing, though, is our repeat rate is 1.10. But in a 30-day time period, it could be that they're not duplicated. So where else can you diagnose? If you go segment by conversions, days to conversion, you can use this thing and scroll all the way down to the bottom of this part here and say, do I have conversion value by time that is firing later on? Let me just go up to the top and get rid of this stupid little thing. Mm -hmm. So what this means here, actually, let me go a little bit further out. This one, we, like just started the Google ads. And since we're scaling on only meta, I'm like PMAX works because it's just gonna, <laughs> it's just going to catch up all the, <laughs> there's a scale in meta. <laughs> Thank you, PMAX. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. um, right here, 45 to 60 days out. All right. There's eight and a half sales. So you have this bell curve. The bell curve goes really high in one day, then starts to level out, then kind of goes dormant. And then you see it start to pick back up here and go out all the way from days 13 to day 90. These are your repeat sales if you count them as every. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, but now if you check this and these all show zero, 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 good indicator that the ones up here have been duplicated. Hmm. And this account, this is, I know these guys. Yeah. This is, and I forget. Like this is a repeat purchase, like every thirty days or so. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is yeah. a uh, this is a subscription model most of the time. It. About Got half it. our sales are subscription. Yep. Okay. So that's what now subscription refiring though will not trigger an event unless you visited that thank you page. Subscription simply charging you doesn't send a signal to Google because it's not tag fired based on URL. Yeah. So a subscription wouldn't normally push this in there. It can if someone goes to their subscription and saves. So if they so log back in, make an adjustment, could fire again. Okay. So in this case, if it is on an auto ship, auto rebuild, whatever it is, it will not like show your, up. It, your lifetime value in, in app is going to be faulty no matter what. No, not necessarily, because the tag won't fire again, even though their recharge app has charged their card again. It won't fire again in Google. Yeah. So, but it can, if I send out an email that says, thank you for your subscription, here's your subscription order, they say, wait a minute, that's not correct. And they go in and make modification to hit save. If it's going off the same thank you page triggering, which I've seen that one time before, it's not every time, it's literally, I've only had that one instance, they actually go to the same like your profile page. Mm -hmm. And so that was actually firing another event when people were just logging in and making edits. We saw like all of a sudden 2200 sales come in because we actually changed um, uh, subscription uh, services and then those refired a whole bunch. So that was fun. But anyway, if you look at the repeat rate and it's above 1.0, 1.0 and you are not expecting it like I am expecting this here and I'm only tracking out to day 30 so my tracking stops here I actually don't track those there if I tracked okay. out to day 90 my repeat rate would be probably like 1.22 okay so that would be okay because we're taking a larger amount of, of people out here so that repeat rate though just ensure that if it's firing over a 1.0 that two things are are happening either one you're expecting that and you're okay by evaluating if it's going down to you know your 30 60 or 90 days whatever your attribution window is set and you see these repeat purchases and you're like that's okay for me just know that the higher amount of repeat purchases you have at scale makes your algorithm work less hard because it wakes up and the buy time said today i had that i got a sale like if we look at the last three days for example the last three days are going to have people that um let's see if i have anybody here i don't have anybody there uh, of course i don't have anybody there dang there's no one that that was that was more than that day that day old but what's interesting is sometimes you can go back um and see like okay on that day i had eight and then i had like one like you'll sometimes see them kind of further down here we don't really have this because it's a new account we're just starting to scale up 
But the older an account is, the larger it is. Sometimes on a Tuesday, you'll have three sales by time. Two of them came from two and three weeks ago because it could be repeat. So just evaluate the way that Google is tracking and make sure your repeat rate isn't too high because everything downstream algorithmically gets disrupted. And then the longer it's like that, the worse it is to come back from. What's the best way to double check this to make sure that you're not missing it? Is just to look in app or do you look at the source of truth or are you talking about like a third party attribution software that might be able to sort through this? Like what's the best way to diagnose this if you yeah. see something that looks a little bit fishy? Yeah. The first thing I would say is after you look at this and you say, hmm, that seems a little high. Mm -hmm. So see the 13th, 14th is 1.17 yesterday. Yeah. It was still 1.17, so it's 17% higher than what it should be. So when we're looking at this way here, typically what I would do is look at it like at a 30 day or like a week window and say, is this something that I expect? Go in and make sure in the last 30 days, is there people that are making multiple purchases in the 30 day window? Yeah, if yes, you're fine. If this is if people are purchasing something every week from you, I'm not saying that people do, but if they're purchasing something every week and you're counting a 30 day and you have this set to every which is count every sale that happened after one click, then this number here is not meeting your ROAS goals off, goals off of cold, uh, cold traffic only. It's meeting your ROAS goals off of every purchase every one individual person made, which has nothing to do with who Google's trying to target now. Okay. Is there a way to set that count to first time? Yeah. So you just move it from every to one. Um, one. So every conversion to one, and then there you go. It means that every click, even if it has 75 repeats, can only count at one time. Got it. Mm -hmm. Would you d recommend that setting in all it cases? It, it, it depends. But it's a harder way of looking at it because like, like the numbers aren't going to look as good. In, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And and what's funny is this also, uh, if you have it set to every, you have to also understand that there's going to be a time lag extension because the more people that you have converting again after 30, 60, 90 days drags out your one day time period to however many is weighted at the end. So if you have one sale on one day and you have one sale on day 10, so one sale on day one, one sale on day 10, your time lags five days. The average in a 10 day period that happens is five days, some in the front, some in the back. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a five day time lag. Is that your actual time lag? No. Right. So as you have a ton of repeat customers coming in every month that bought, the more that are at the 30 mark and the 60 mark and the 90 mark that are buying again drags that time lag out artificially. So you think that my account has a time lag of seven days. It might actually be two, but people purchase again after 15 days because they ordered a sample the first time and then they came back and ordered the full kit last. Okay. Art artificial time lag. So understand that this is also going to drag out time lag if you have a count to every and you do have a repeat rate within the time period of the click-through conversion window that you're choosing. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you really have to know, obviously, what your products are to be right. with. <laughs> yeah, you got I mean, to know your sales cycle real well. In this particular case with these guys, it's like it's a full subscription, I believe. Like there's an auto subscribe possible. Like there's no sample. No, if it's I, an auto subscribe. My other yeah. client has a sample and the, the sample's $12 and then they come back and order $2,000 worth of it. So this thing gets really messed up. Yeah. yeah. Which I love that model, by the way. I love the sample. Know, right? you know? Yeah, the sample model is great. Um, cool. More people did it. I know, that's right? The, that's the question. That's, that's like more Costco's of an offer. Around. It's like an so offer long. question, really, more than anything else. Um, yeah. I mean, we've that's seen like more. Around so long. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's like, just follow the people that are making the big money. Like Costco is obviously doing a pretty good job, <laughs> so they must know what they're doing. So if you're reevaluating how you actually sell online, yep. well, one of the best examples that I always, I always love to use this. Is this is a, a, a client that was selling about five thousand dollars a month on their e-commerce store they had subscription business for a, a magazine mm -hmm. and they're like well how do we sell stuff on our e-com site I'm like well do you have any sample packs and they had sample packs of spices and coffee sugars mm -hmm. and every single time we ran unfortunately they had supply issues because they were not the original <laughs> manufacturer every mm -hmm. time danielle who you've never met uh i don't think so she's one of the whatever she's in pod four in australia she's okay. an absolute ninja <laughs> every time she would start running this we'd run out of it within two weeks i'm like just get more because then yep. people would come back and place orders for like cinnamon coffee sugars for like 
three, four hundred dollars and like give them out as Christmas gifts. <laughs> but it was the sample pack that transformed the business. Like if you have a way in which to get people your product in a mm -hmm. very cost conscious way so that they at least try it before they subscribe and or buy. Oh my God. Game changer. Oh, it's so, huge. And for then make sure. sure your suppliers are, are ready for it. Cause if your product's good, they're going to order a lot. Yep. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. And so especially you're... if you can get like, you know, it's, I mean, drug dealers learn this years ago versus <laughs> free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> digital marketing in the drug dealing industry really isn't all that different. Actually. I came from the pharmaceutical industry where we sold opioids. So, Hey, if, there you uh, go. And, and now we're doing, I mean, human online trafficking we're driving traffic so it's, it's kind of close uh <laughs> so, right, Joey, so, uh, this so is we're on another using. screen here uh are we this answering is, questions it's just joey goes hey what's the segment john's using for that view so i didn't want it to go ah. too far joey this is the segment it is a uh, segment by uh conversions and then days to conversion got it yep so here's the next part this actually, you know what? I'll go to there from this view so you know how to get to there. The next one is ecom prod ID or ID. Google uses both depending, depending upon what the tag feels like that day. That's how it was explained to me by Google. So just know that that's officially the, <laughs> the tag parameter. Yeah. Google officially doesn't really know what's going on inside their ad platform is officially, I think. What yeah, it, it, changes. <laughs> yeah. It changes. It um, changes. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go into the audience manager here under tools and audience manager, and then you're going to go to your data sources. And this took me like 10 seconds to find because I don't like the new interface of Google and I've held off on using it for as long as I could before it finally just, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, here Ecom Prodigy is deprecated and it's changed to ID. That's what I heard, Joey, until I built this new account and then it goes, ta-da, and pulls right back up. This was fun. Um, it, it was supposed to be deprecated, but now they just seem to be using both. I don't know why. Um, mm. But you'll see Ecom Prodigy and ID, both the same thing. It's, I mean, this was tracking 1574, 1510, 219 hits 220. I mean, they're the same freaking thing, but Google uses both. So if you only see one, that's okay. But Ecom Prod ID is the product ID parameter that Google uses to identify what's happening on the site and also fires your dynamic remarketing. So if Ralph went to the site, saw that product there, put it, that item into cart, maybe didn't check out, um, maybe left on that page and you left and I have 5,396 people in the last 30 days that went to that product right there. And now this is what Google is being fed back from the tag that says, hey, go show Ralph that product there. That's the product that Ralph is interested in. Right. And so it's either that that is the product that you, there's, there's a three different ways. One, you spent the most amount of time on that uh, product on the site. You left the website looking at that product, or you added that product to your cart and did or did not purchase. It just depends on you know if you're going to be excluding those those purchasers. But that's what the ecom prod ID does: is it identifies that that um, product and it ties it to a person. However, it does much more than just fire the dynamic remarketing. What it does is it learns user behavior by product. So if they see Ralph clicks an ad and goes to product A, then goes to product B, and then buys product B a bunch, they're going to show more product A just because that's the ad that's attributed to that click that got a sale, even though it was not it got the, the interest. Right. That, right. That got the interest. That actually so makes the, a lot of sense. Right. So they're saying, well, a lot of people, when they click on that ad, they buy that product and it's a dumb engine. So I don't have to be like, how do we make this more efficient? That's up to us.